Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. We need to talk about McJudas here. Um, it is time, time to discuss a happening. Uh, during the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial, Legal Bites and Legal Mindset both brought me on to their respective channels. Now, Legal Bites had me on first, and she was very nice to me. All of my interactions with her personally were cordial. However, as that trial started to gain momentum, it appeared that she had a noticeable and remarkable shift in her attitude and personality. I have always been a fan of Nick Ricada, and I enjoyed his coverage of the Rittenhouse trial, which was legendary. Okay, Nick is a visionary, and he pioneered a type of content style, right? These collaborative panels that Legal Bites emulated during the Johnny Depp trial. Nick has never claimed to be any sort of authority figure, and he always owns the grift. That is what people like about him. He's genuine and authentic. He paved the way for all of these other channels who've taken to calling themselves the quote-unquote law tube community. Now, Andrew, Legal Mindset, understands this. And so do many others. I appreciate Elite having me on her channel when I was attending that trial, the Johnny Depp trial in person. But she had me on one time and she never reached out and she never responded to me again. And uh, I noticed that she started uh, encouraging lawyers to attend that trial in person Um you know, and maybe she thought it would be better to only talk to them. In stark contrast, Illegal Mindset brought me on his channel numerous times, and he always promoted and linked to my channel. Andrew didn't care that I'm not a lawyer with a shiny degree. He made it a point to learn things about me, to become my friend, and he continues to support me. Despite the protestations of others in the so-called law tube community who have warned him against having me on because I'm just too based, too unbreaded, and too controversial. Uh, so there's that. And I know that People have that have reached out to him and said, oh, don't have her on, blah, blah, blah. She'll just drag you down, you know, and Andrew has never listened to that. So what Elite did with the DUI guy, that incident, we all know what I'm talking about. If you've been following this stuff, the law tube drama for a while, you all remember this. She made a big stink over a screenshot of a facial reaction um, that was absolutely ridiculous. You know, when you're sitting in the courtroom reacting to things, it, it's and then someone takes a screenshot of a one second, like a split second reaction. Come on, man. It's just ridiculous. I was in that courtroom and literally everybody reacted that way. It was a natural and quick reaction. And someone just happened to screenshot that second, right? Right. In that courtroom, people were laughing in the gallery. Like, that's simply how it was for the duration of that trial. Johnny Depp is a really funny guy. And uh, he he's like a character. You know, when he was on the stand testifying, he is, the way he talks about things is he was making jokes. I mean, he was being really funny and he kept kind of going after um, uh, Amber Heard's, like, lawyers and it was funny. Like, he was making everybody laugh. There was just a lot of shocking stuff that came out at that trial, too. There's pictures of, like, lines of cocaine, um, all kinds of weird stuff. And then Amber heard her testimony was so ridiculous. It was so over the top. The entire thing was like, you just could not help but naturally have that reaction to it. So for her to act like because someone took a screenshot of this and turned it into a meme that somehow she needed to police people's behavior or that she was some kind of spokesperson for a community uh, is just absolutely ridiculous. You know, and if it was just that, 
you could explain that away as, oh, she simply made a mistake. Like, I never made a video. I never talked about that, really, that incident. But I didn't like it because I have been in the content creation um, community, I guess, if you want to call it that, for about five years now. I've been doxxed by NBC News. I've had a New York Times journalist, Kevin Roos, stalk me for half a year reaching out to everybody I know, trying to get information about me. Like, I know what it's like to be in in the, these kinds of communities, and I know how toxic and crazy things can get. So I try to, like, ignore stuff unless it's, like, a really big deal. I, I'm probably not going to waste my time with it. But this has been seemingly a pattern of behavior with her. Like, she seems to think very highly of herself and believes herself to be in a position of authority over other people. Now, Legal Bites got big by going on to Nick Ricada's channel during the Rittenhouse trial. She should have his back 100% period, full stop. And I don't care if there have been things that have happened personally between them, right? Maybe they're not that good of friends or whatever. It doesn't matter. When someone has helped you out in the past and you owe a lot to them, you have a an obligation to support that person, especially if they are facing a coordinated attack. What she did with Hogue was a betrayal. Make no mistake, that was a Judas move. We shall now call her Legal Bites McJudas. Were the 30 pieces of silver worth it? And that's the thing about betrayal, isn't it? It never comes from the enemy. Disloyalty isn't a reflection on us, the people who are disloyal to us, it is a reflection on the disloyal people who have no principles and no values. Matthew 10, 16 says, quote, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. We know, we know human beings are fallen people. And we know that the enemy uses people to attack us. And so we know most people are like wolves. Everything that has happened is a reflection on Elite's character, not Andrew's or Nick's. I wasn't going to get into this on my channel, but you all know Andrew is my guy, and I'm not going to sit here while someone makes a spite stream demanding struggle sessions and not address it, not say anything about it. How much time can we really spend trying to save Judases from hanging themselves? That's a question I think we should all ask ourselves. You know, some people are fickle and opportunistic, and I think that comes from arrogance. I think it's the inability to self-reflect and see what others have done for you. And I think it, it really comes down to a lack of respect for other people. It's a self-centered type of attitude. So with all that being said, that's the introduction to this. I now want to look at a couple clips here, and I know we're already eight minutes in, um, but I think this is very important, and I don't think it's tr just trivial, right? Um, so the first clip I want to play, Tom Reno says bites. Uh, this comes from uh, Joe's channel, Good Logic, where Legal Bites was asked about, hey, how would you feel if it was you that needed support? And she reveals herself here. And I want you to listen to the the language she uses because she doesn't just speak off the cuff. You can tell that she's, oh, how do I word this perfectly? How do I word this in a way that comes off with me looking good? But what she's really saying here in this clip is that she was angry. She was angry about the fact that Nick Rakeda talked about the DUI guy incident publicly. She felt like he should have just reached out to her privately or something like that. But the thing is, she made that public, you know? And she started trying to speak for everybody, for a community of people. So I want you all to listen to this. How would you see the clips and tweets if it were you who needed support? Nick wouldn't need to look into it to get it in front to support you. 
Well, that's an interesting uh, super chat because that's a situation that I did face and it did not play out that way. <clears throat> no, it's not the same thing, though. You did not have a community of people false flagging your channel. You weren't being banned everywhere. You didn't lose your Twitter account and then your YouTube channel. So these are not the same things. But look at how she tries to equate that because it's all about her. So I, I know that there's a lot of criticism about that I should have I should have reached out to him, you know, personally, all this kind of stuff. Um, OK, let me just say this about the DUI guy incident. I made, like I said, I made a series of mistakes. One of those big mistakes was making a, a, and I don't want to say ill-advised, but, uh, I made a, I made a video that was, that was dumb to make. She doesn't want to say ill-advised, like really? <laughs> Why did you do it at all? It wasn't necessary. It was patently stupid and ridiculous. So I guess she's going to minimize that. And that's the thing with her. She's always minimizing anything she's done, framing herself as a victim constantly. Uh, you know, she she admits that, oh, it was a stupid video to make. I made a series of mistakes. Why did it happen at all, though? And why does this stuff seem to continue to happen you continually make the wrong choice. Why? I made I did the, I made the choice to make that video when I was running on like zero sleep. There was absolutely no way that that was going to be successful. Yeah, here here it is. Okay, when I was running on zero sleep, so minimizing. Oh, it wasn't really my fault. Oh, I don't really have to be accountable for my actions and behaviors, you know. And there's no way that was going to be successful. Does the, is that the point? Whether or not it was successful doesn't matter. It was not appropriate. It was uncalled for. It was wrong to do. It wasn't the right thing to do. That's what matters, not whether or not it was successful as a video. And I remember you and I were talking ahead of time, you know, about my whole situation behind the scenes. And I wasn't sure what to do. Um, but I knew that there was, that there were, there were certain things that were getting passed around. And so I wanted to make some kind of a statement. I just, at the end of the day, I did the wrong thing. Um, and this after I had already made a statement where I had, I had used the wrong words. I had said something along the lines of like, when we send people into the courtroom, I knew we weren't sending anyone into the courtroom. Then why did you say it? Like, she just admitted that she said something that was inappropriate. And by the way, that video, like almost all of the videos she does, she plans them out and they're almost like pre-recorded, but she'll be, she'll pretend that she's being candid. She worded that like that for a reason. Like when we send people into the courtroom, we, who is she speaking for? Did she send them there or did they go on their own as independent people to cover something because it was interesting and important and they were sharing that information with you and others as a community, as normal content creators do. But it's like she wanted to take credit for them being there in the courtroom and getting that coverage, but didn't want to be responsible for other things that they did. It's like, what are you doing? What are you even talking about? And again, it wasn't an issue. It was a non-issue. She was concerned that she'd built this big platform and was making lots of money and that something could jeopardize that. So rather than be loyal to the people that are helping her, like those guys were, getting her exclusive content, exclusive information, she was more concerned about herself. What I meant to say was that we were we were helping to facilitate people getting into the courtroom because through my stream, we were we we had set up with Nurse Liz to to have line sitters. We had our people that we were we were actively <coughs> using my channel to try to promote people to try to volunteer their time. So the folks like you, DUI guy, Rob, Ian could all get into the courtroom. Um, and I was concerned about, you know, things being being seen in a certain way and and why why what does that even mean i was there 
guys, I was in the courtroom many times. And I'm telling you that what that reaction of the DUI guy was literally everybody else was doing the same thing the entire time. People were reacting that way. They were making faces. They were kind of turning and looking at each other like, oh, did you hear that? Did he really just say that? You know, it was sort of like what was happening in the courtroom. And again, it's a split second screenshot of a, of a natural reaction. Some things you can't suppress. And I can tell you, people were trying to be stoic. People were trying to not react to this stuff. But some of it, like you, you literally can't help yourself. You know, and then you you quickly like gain back control of yourself. But come on, it's just it was so insane. But she was concerned with how she would look or that the media might say something not and call her a naughty, you know, and so that that was what was sort of facilitating this kind of stuff. Um, I, I made some I made some comments that were. I didn't intend to make, and I knew that I couldn't take them back. And so that's why I didn't fight back on it. When I made that, that why I didn't fight back on it. What does that even mean? You mean why you didn't defend what you did? How about because it was wrong? It was wrong video. That was an apology video. It was the most embarrassing, most vulnerable, most humiliating, lowest point of my life. And it was played out for the internet. And it was played out for a lot of people that were already very angry with me because there was there was a narrative out there about what had happened. I ha Okay, well, here's the thing. You're a public person now. Like, you chose to create your channel and to be sort of like a public figure and to put yourself out there. Yes, yeah, sometimes that requires humility and vulnerability and being like an actual human being. And other people are going to watch and judge you. You can't avoid that. Like, you knew that going into this kind of field. You knew that was going to happen. Yes, yeah, so when you make a mistake, it gets amplified. That's happened to me many times. I've done many things that were embarrassing to me over my five years on the internet. You know, it's you you just admit it and you take responsibility and accountability and then you move on and you don't you don't make those same mistakes over and over again. You don't repeat that behavior. You're supposed to learn from it. I had my perspective that I desperately wanted to get out and I felt like I couldn't. I felt like I couldn't do it um in the way that I, that was truthful and the way that I, the way that I had like really just, just wanted to get my side of things out on that. And so that was like my attempt to do that. And it was completely unsuccessful. Again, now, unsuccessful or it was the wrong thing to do. It wasn't right. This is what I mean. And this is like what bothers me about her. Everyone else in our community that saw that video reached out to me about it. Uh, maybe not everyone, but I would say most people. And, you know, talked about it to me personally. Um, Nick is not one of those people. And I got a lot of ridicule for that video. And rightfully, rightfully so. So she was mad that Nick didn't personally reach out to her but he made commentary on it he turned it into a learning experience for everybody why does she think that like she's entitled to be treated like a baby then next thing i know after after you know all and look at joe like he i i have to give him props for this he's laughing at this girl he's like you are ridiculous all of this happening next thing i know nick is nick nick is not only talking about it he's dissecting it for a live stream and and i, I just i remember i remembered feeling like okay this is not something that you're going to reach out to me personally to see if i'm okay to see if i to if you if, if you're if, okay really if I have a different take on things that have happened, you're going to you're going to dissect it on a live stream seemingly for super chats and all this kind of stuff. Oh, right. So I just I was I was hurt by that, but I wasn't going to hold on to it. And I was just going to say, you know, but you did, didn't you? I suppose that this is Cause you're spiteful. This is just the way that our relationship is like I, I had thought we were friends 
but I guess that this is more of a transactional kind of thing. Why would you think that this means you're not friends? Because he spoke about something in a very mild, meek way because people were asking him about it. Like, what? This is, again, these things are not the same. What happened to Rakeda by the leftist uh, Troon Brigade to deplatform him everywhere is not comparable to people said that you did something wrong because you did something wrong. These are not the same, but she's equating it to being the same. You did something that upset me, so I'm not going to have your back when the chips are down. And and to see to see that get picked apart for the public so that the public can learn at my expense rather than talking to me behind the scenes of this is what you should have done this is how how I can counsel you <sighs> that the only way for me to learn what nick thought about you know like what i should learn from it was through a pu very public dissection in front of a crowd of people that were very happy to also did you think to reach out to him and ask him for advice? No, you didn't. Because that would require too much humility. To also, you know, also come after me for all kinds of reasons. It didn't feel like that's what something that a friend would do. So I just basically from that, from that, I just was like, you know what? Then, then I guess that's, that's our, that's the nature of our relationship. And that's Terrible. Okay, so... I want to go now here <laughs> to, um, yeah, to this meme. When you strike at the king, you best not miss. I just love it. I thought that was so funny. And again, it's it's true. But yeah, let's let's look at this here. Um, this is Rakeda. He's uh, he's responding to her request. She says, at Legal Mindset and Rakeda Law, I'm calling you out. A lot has been said about me, my friends, and my family over the last few days, but neither of you have had the courage to come at me one-on-one. -on -one. Now is the time. I was hoping I would see you both on Joe Nearman's stream on Thursday night so we could hash it out. But as I've learned now that I've requested to be there, suddenly Andrew doesn't want to discuss this. Fancy that. Really? Really? Okay, so that's that's the attitude she's taking again. And Rakeda says, ha 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 ha, I have done nothing but ask people not to engage in drama and tell the truth about what has happened. I have never called for bullying. I didn't ask for anyone to do anything on my behalf. I didn't demand allegiance or purity. And I specifically left quote unquote law tube openly and publicly because I am no Stradamus and could see this shit coming from a light year away. I will not be attending her silly griftathon struggle session, but I'm now considering hosting my own more than at any previous point. I'm going to be on Infowars tonight to, uh, for the Alex Jones verdict watch. I'll update everyone with specific time when it's laid down. Down. And that's the thing. That's exactly what she's demanding. A struggle session. It isn't to talk about something. And what what she knows what she did was wrong. So why not just say that again? It's the same thing with like the DUI guy. She knew what she did was wrong. But instead of have some humility, instead of humbling yourself and saying, yes, I made a mistake. I did something wrong and I'm asking for forgiveness. She's going to pretend she's the victim. Richard Hogue here says, so the main criticism I have seen is that I did not immediately jump to support YouTuber Nick Ricada after his channel was banned. And as at that umbrella and others have posited that I backed the ban, that is not true. But let's talk about my actual position. And he goes on to say a bunch of nonsense. That umbrella guy is right. He said, my post doesn't name anyone that didn't back Ricada Law. But it seems many in the quote unquote law tube think they don't owe Ricada Law, and 99.9% .9 of you do. Regardless, none of you are pure enough to not be a target of their quote-unquote mass flagging. You'll either stand together or fall alone. And that was the point that was being made, is that you know, there's nothing you, you can straddle the fence as long as you want, but there's nothing that you can do that is going to appease the mob. They're eventually going to come for all of us, for everyone. Doesn't matter how meek and mild you are, 
you're eventually going to become a target. So you have to stand together as fellow lawyers, content creators, whatever. And if you don't, then no one's going to have your back when you need it. It's the same thing that happened with Owen Benjamin and Alex Jones. Regardless of what you think of them personally or what you think of their opinions, you should not be against their being deplatformed because eventually that will come for you. Once they've taken out everyone that they call dangerous, then you're going to be next. And people need to understand that. And I don't see why this is like like controversial to say it really shouldn't be so now i want to um i want to cover this she did this video um she called it like dealing with bullies so what she was saying is that people that didn't agree with how she handled this are actually bullies hello and it, and, and again it's very similar to what she did the video she made talking about the dui guy incident where she acts like she's never done anything wrong she questions the manhood of legal mindset and ricada law and says that they're not real men because they're not like war veterans or something it's absolutely disrespectful and ridiculous but this is 40 minutes long she actually made a powerpoint of everybody's tweets trying to say that somehow her the what she did and her and Hoag's reaction to what happened to Ricardo wasn't that different than everybody else and it's completely disingenuous again just say I did something wrong but she can't because everything is about her and it's all personal with her it's not about you know hey uh I have some personal issues with Nick but I'm going to defend his right to have a voice she won't just say that so, looks like some folks saw my tweets. I always thought that calling out people on the internet was total BS because it's totally schoolyard. It's not my style. It's not what I like to do. She literally did this to the DUI guy. <laughs> and there are people saying that what I'm doing is too schoolyard. But when it happened to me, people seem to be okay with it. It's all stupid. And I agree that it is. But if there's anything that I've learned about the internet in the last six months, it's that you can't just try to duck your head and hope that bullies are going to go away. Bullies. That's not. You're just what a bully. Happens. Nothing you Clearly. say is valid or legitimate. That's what she's saying. Thing is, they go dormant and then they wait for another opportunity to come at you. I want to note first off, super chats and all monetization are turned off on my channel. I want to make that very clear. This is not about monetization. Why does that even matter? Again, she's got a virtue signal right off the bat. But by the way, the super thanks are on so people can donate money in the comment section to this video that she made. This is about standing up to people that are talking a lot about me and are welcome to come join me. But let's be clear. People are saying things, but are they true? I feel like we should go through that. Let's start with Andrew. Here she comes going after my guy, Andrew, who has done nothing wrong. Andrew has been a king throughout all of this, and he has been very good to me. And I'm not going to stand for this. You don't talk about my man that way. Let's start with Andrew. I'm going to start by just letting him do the talking for himself. How about that? She lies about him, by the way. She completely misrepresents what he said. So, this all started when Nick got booted off of YouTube. He got booted off of YouTube and people were saying this is about free speech. Was it really about free speech? Was it about free speech? I don't know. Let's see. Let's 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 <sighs> okay. let's talk about what happened. 
That's Nate was on, on Andrew's channel, called him out for basically trying to shame people and, and calling for people to unsubscribe to people's channels. This is what he had to say. Uh, right now, there's somebody saying, hey, Nate's being based as fuck, right? Someone said that. But some oh, also yeah. said, Cynthia also sent $5 and said, Andrew, you call for people to unsub, stop denying. Uh, and I read it, right? Even if it's bullshit, which Cynthia, that's bullshit. Uh, I did not call for the unsubbing until, I did not say unsub until after this fucking kerfuffle, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I didn't call for a mass unsubbing. I just said, if you want to unsub, unsub, right? Go ahead, unsub. If you don't like you, them, then unsub you, for the content. And by the way, I you're called- You're being a lawyer. To, you're being a Nate, lawyer. Nate, that's lawyering right there. No, 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 that's but Nate, Nate, Nate. Nate, yeah. but I told them to unsub from me. I said, if you don't like That's this content, true. if you don't like me, unsub right now. I called for it on that stream. I said, unsub you did. from me. If you don't like this, if you think I'm lying, you think I'm full of shit, unsub from me right fucking now. I don't want you as my sub uh, if, you, uh, if you're if you going to be bitching about this sort of stuff or you have a problem <laughs> with my take or if you think it's bad. All these people. Okay. When he's talking about a kerfuffle, he's talking about the the live stream where I had Rick on my channel and I had Kurt on my channel. And we talked about Nick getting banned. And we talked about saying, uh, we said, we gave our support. We said, I don't know what has happened with this strike. I don't know what has happened with him getting oh, please. banned. And we said, but it sucks. I said, I, no. he has gone through a lot of years of blood, sweat, and tears of building up a channel, and I hate to see that taken away. Please. So, what day did that happen on? So and this by the way, the kerfuffle I think that he was talking about was when she went on Joe's channel, and it was literally called, like, the Law Tube Kerfuffle, but whatever. This was this was yesterday that, uh, that he went on. You guys want to go and... and, and Find, find the live stream. You can find it. There's a date on it, October 6th. And by the way, Andrew defended her when people were saying, calling her out. He said, well, at least she put out a tweet about it. That's more than others have done. Like he literally defended this girl and she lied to him and said that he's a communist or he said he didn't care if he was being a communist or something. That's absolutely not what he said. He said, I don't want to upset the communist uh brigade or whatever so she completely lies about what he said and and she doesn't care she knows what she's doing and she has a bigger platform than andrew she doesn't she's still gonna lie this is before october 6th here's where she i believe she misrepresents it Hang on a second. So I'm saying it right now. Put my money on this right now. Put my fucking money on this. Anybody who is in LawTube or calls themselves in LawTube, particularly those that came on Nick's show, that, that streamed with him, that were there grifting off him, particularly back in the day, particularly if they were during the Rittenhouse era, or maybe they just became famous during the and popped off during the um, era of Amber Heard. It doesn't fucking matter. Anybody who came on that stream, who came on his platform, and they gave him a voice, they grew their channels, they grew relatively big, right? And if they are not covering this, if they're not supporting him, they are full of shit. You should unsubscribe from them. I'm going to say it. Nobody else is going to say that. I'm going to fucking say it. If you are a guy who follows Rakeda and you see somebody else, another content creator, and they're not fucking supporting him right now, you should goddamn unsubscribe. I'm sorry. That's my personal opinion. I'm not going to fucking hold back. All these other people that are like, oh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want to anger I the fucking him. communist cabal that's going on here. No, I don't give a fuck. A lot of them are faggots. I'm going to say it right now, right? <laughs> yes, King. Go off. This is what he said. Yeah, he's right. Rick and I said anything on my on my channel. No, on my it live wasn't. Stream. Oh, my God. He doesn't care. He gave you if he is being hours. a communist. That's not what he work. said. He did not say that. He didn't say, I don't care if I'm being a communist. That is not what he said. She's lying about that. In other words, he doesn't care about anyone else saying what they actually think. That's not what he said. This is what's happening. Ugh. He does not care. 
before I even have an opportunity to open my mouth to say what what I actually think. He said, everybody, I'm giving people 24 hours. He didn't name her specifically at this point. Because he said, oh, yeah, there's a time difference, whatever. But if people don't support a man who basically gave them a massive platform and they grew their audience grifting off his streams and coming on, then, yeah, if you don't have that person's back, then why should anyone have yours? That's what he's saying. And he is right. I am under threat. No, you're not under of threat. Of losing subs. Oh, and the, here it comes. This is all she cares about is her platform, how much money she makes, the threat of losing subs. That's all that matters to her. Not, you know, doing the right thing. I am under threat that if I don't do what Andrew wants me to do in exactly the way that I want him, that he wants me to do it, I will face consequences. Same thing for Rick. He may not have named me specifically, but let's be real. Do we do we have any idea who he's talking about? Under threat of losing subs. That's all I care about. Really? Really? Who he might be referring to? He's oddly specific about who he thinks that, that should be listening to his message. Unbelievable. And you can look at the subs right now. You can look at my subs. This is what's happening. This is this is the consequence of me of me saying actually what I think. No. Of me saying me uh, No, this is the consequence of you being a snake and people recognizing that and saying, gee, she's done this seemingly many times. It seems to be a pattern of behavior with her. I don't think I want to support that person. You don't know if it has anything to do with Andrew or not. I think it's people saying, hey, there's something wrong about the way she's reacting to this. There's something wrong about her attitude and behavior. I don't think that what she did was right. I don't want to support somebody that can't be bothered to support the people that helped them. Maybe it's because of you. You are responsible for your behavior. It is not because of Andrew making a video. He has a smaller platform than you. If you are losing subs like you did with that DUI guy, with that incident, you lost people too. Maybe you are to blame for that. Did you ever stop to consider this? That maybe you are the problem. Approaching, Approaching this the way that I choose to approach it. He doesn't, you can approach it the way you want and people don't have to like the way that you're handling things. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the reason people have unsubscribed because they didn't like your approach. They didn't like the way that you didn't stand by somebody who you should have supported and who would support you if this happened to you. We all know Rakeda. We know the kind of person he is. We know the kind of person Andrew is. We know they both would have had your back. If the chips were down and you lost your Twitter and your YouTube channel and you didn't have a way to call out for help when people were mass flagging you and lying about you. And she knew that's what it was. Come on, guys. She had time to research it. And Andrew did a video recently where he said, look, there's a a group Twitter DM group where people were talking about this. And I know that these people were in that group and saw it. So they knew. She knew. And it's just that that is why, like, why is she incapable of this kind of self-reflection and accountability that like, maybe you should change your behavior. If you keep having these problems, maybe it's because of you, right? I don't care if he's if he's being a communist here, guys. He didn't say that. These are his words. He doesn't care. This is not about free speech. This is about someone wanting to bully someone else, wanting to make someone else say what they want them to say in their way. He's not bullying you or demanding you say things the way he wants you to say it. He was saying, hey, if these people aren't being good people, maybe we shouldn't support them. And And he's absolutely right. If you are on the side of the censorship and of YouTube, why should we support you? 
that's the thing. And he's absolutely right. Okay, so she goes through all these ridiculous tweets here. And I, I do want to play some of this. I know this is getting long, but there's a reason because she talks about her face at some point, a facial reaction. And she says, oh, why is this a big deal? And it's just so ironic coming from her because she literally did that to that DUI guy. All right. Look at this, though. She had the time. She had the time to put together a fucking PowerPoint presentation of everybody's tweets, but she didn't have the time to research what happened to Mr. Ricada, to Nick. Come on, guys, like, it, this is just ridiculous. October 5th, 2022. Here's a tweet. Why was Ricada Law's YouTube channel nuked? Team YouTube. The community will need and deserves a specific response to be sure that this was done in good faith and justifiably. This is a question. Oops, I guess I gave it up. And look this at this little dorky tweet. game she's playing. He is he is not coming out wholeheartedly, full-throatedly for Nick Ricada. He's asking questions. He also wasn't the one that built his channel off of Nick Ricada during Rittenhouse, Elite. Come on. Here's one. <sighs> Woke up this morning to learn Nick Ricada she's was so banned condescending. From if you don't know, I'm on a vastly different time zone. I know zero underlying facts. I'm not going to opine now. Now, as in at this moment. Doesn't mean that that's not going to happen later. But I will repeat that I generally don't like even controversial people getting canceled. There's been a lot about this phrase, even controversial. Is he not controversial? Is he not controversial? What? Maybe we'll see in a little bit someone saying that he's controversial and it's not me. Anyway, okay. here's a second tweet. Does it matter? Anyway, if you enjoy his content and you want to keep watching him, here's a link to his locals community where you'll be able to see his stuff for the foreseeable future. And if you don't, then you can always. Here's another difference. Right, she's still going over this stuff and these other guys. Is it because of freedom of speech on that? Blah, 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 me, me, me. Give me a second, guys. Oh, and don't worry, we'll get to it. This wasn't live. She pre-recorded this, we all know it. With that, it has Here everything it to do with now, I'm suddenly in a community that is deciding proper behavior of other community members and implementing multiple levels of punishment, fuck off with that. I want nothing to do with that. And let's be really fucking clear on something here. Whatever DUI guy did in that courtroom pales in comparison to what I say every day and every single night on this show. It pales in comparison. He, he had a, he had a ooh face in court. It pales to what I do. So why am I not excluded from the group? This is the problem. Now we have a politics issue, a group politics issue, not a, not a Republican Democrat. Now I've got a group politics issue. Uh, why am I not kicked out? So I say to me, I kick me out because I won't be involved in kicking someone else out. I'm not their dad. I'm not their boss. I'm not their coworker. I'm me. And this is, I know this is a roundabout way to tell you this story and to give you this advice. And I've seen people say, get on with it, whatever. You are you and your brand is you. So in other words, folks shouldn't be policing one another. That was about the, that was about the 
Yeah, Nick has always said that. Law tube, top 10 thing that happened. Now, that was back in May. He was willing to say, all of us are independent creators. No one should be telling one another how to comport them. There's a difference though. No one was telling you how to comport yourself, but you should have one another's back when someone is facing a deplatforming, which you were not. Not the same thing. Themselves. No one should be telling She's another channel unbelievable. what they should be doing. No, people are allowed to have opinions, though. And we're allowed to say what you did was wrong because it was. Now, I want to get to this part. I think this is it, where, she's, where she cries about making a face or something and people complaining about a face she made. She literally did that to that the UI this guy. Idea the lack of self-awareness is I stunning. Because I was on his channel during the Rittenhouse trial. It's silly. No, it isn't. It's absolutely silly for someone else to require my loyalty because I appeared on someone he else's channel. He doesn't require it. I am absolutely- It shouldn't have to be required. It should be a given. That's the problem. Absolutely grateful for everything that not came really, from Not really, you're not, apparently. And, you know, yeah, I did get a boost from that. So did Joe. So did Andrew. Yeah. So did Nick. A lot of these guys did. Everyone that showed up on that channel showed up and ended up gaining from it. Yeah. Just because someone gained from it, does that mean that that was their motive for getting into it? No one said Are that. Are we really that cynical that we're going to look at all oh, of Oh, Christ. This is, I can't even, I can't even listen to this nonsense with her, okay? But at some point. On Andrew's live stream yesterday where he did make a response he said this is the last time i'm going to talk about this and i i suspect that the reason for that is because i told him i wanted to talk to him and i expected to see him on joe's joe's and i wanted the struggle session i wanted to call the manager uh at some point she talks about you know nick and andrew aren't real men questioning their manhood and masculinity i want to know from nick if i had a friend on my stream all right, let's skip past it. Blah, blah, blah. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm done with this. Really? I don't want to be talking about this shit. There are so many more interesting things to talk about. On this channel, we talk about law. We talk about cases. There are plenty of trials that are going on right now that are so All right, well, we'll move on. I just can't even at this point deal with this nonsense. There's a guy, um, Mr. Sen, who did a video on this, and he makes a very good point as well, that these people are snakes. Oh, conundrum. Now, truth be told, I don't know a damn thing about these two, but I do know their positions on the matter, and I do know the simple, simple mindset of... If you got to show loyalty, man, for yes. those that have helped you out, right? There's simple things that sometimes you don't really need to know more than surface level. And for this, mm -hmm. it seems to be the case that you don't need to know more than the surface level. Basically, simple. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Show loyalty. Show respect. Mm -hmm. And help your fellow brethren. There you go. That's really all that needs to be said. But just to, to be even funnier, when you have Dr. Carlin Borisenko supporting you, I, I don't know, man. She made a four. Uh, this woman is completely mentally ill, total sociopath, an absolute freak. And she made a four hour and 36 minute live stream saying, learning from legal bites on how to deal with bullies. I shit you not timing thing that happened so guys um, we're, we're here because look because, at because, it because where is my screen i didn't know i was going to do this stream today um i was kind of Dear feeling it God. out it's been something i've been thinking about doing for a while so as you guys know well it's some voice. of you know maybe not all of you know um uh, i have been dealing with boys. like really intense bullying uh, in like the content creator uh, space for, for the last two years oh 
of people don't like, like really, me. really badly. Oh my the, 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 and it's been really oh, bad for the last so year. Like really, really oh, bad. Like we're talking every done. single day. Why don't people of like my me? Fucking life for the last year. It has nothing if to do you guys with my have seen me have emotional behavior, breakdowns, which I've had, my mental um, breakdowns, probably in some cases because I do actually think there's there's value in expressing emotions publicly. I think there's a lot of value in showing people that it's all right to have emotions, that it's okay to have ups and downs and highs and lows and goods and bads. And I think that that's something that we should normalize. To be honest, I'm a little woke in that aspect of it. Not really, but like I, I but do like, think that we should show human beings that it is okay to be human beings. I think that we've lost a lot of our humanity in the past several years. Uh, and I wouldn't call having like these insane sociopathic fits of rage like <laughs> just showcasing our humanity. Like, learn some self control, man. Like, you can control your emotions. I don't think expressing emotions are bad, but there have definitely been occasions where I've expressed emotions. I've been sad. I've been angry. Hey, I've done that too. I've expressed emotions. I've been sad. I've been vulnerable. I've been real because I think that's cool and it's important and it's just like how I am. I don't act. I don't be play a character when I go on air. I'm just me. But I also exercise self-control when it's necessary. Like I don't you know, just unleash fits of rage onto people over perceived slights and burn bridges and do crazy shit like stalking and harassing people like Carlin does. I don't become sexually obsessed with people and then like post screenshots of conversations and all of this insane stuff that she has done. Uh, oh my God. Angry. I've been frustrated. And a, and a lot of times that people have seen me, um, breakdown especially in the last year has been a result of the ongoing incessant never oh it's everyone else's fault not hers she's never done anything wrong you know she just couldn't admit like that crt is anti-white oh you're not allowed to say that because you know she's still an sjw but pretending not to be so she can grift off of everybody ever ending bullying that i have been experiencing from several people then who get I off will not the internet name because they don't log off thought does fucking deserve to be named but if you're on twitter you know who they are because it has literally gotten to a point with the bullying where in order to try to keep some Everyone's semblance of sanity in this situation what sanity no one thinks you have any semblance of sanity holy cow she is just talk, talk, talk. How do you spend four hours and 30 minutes rambling like this? And who watches this? Who listens to this? One of them I filed police reports against in multiple countries. Because you're mentally like, ill. It's no joke. Like, it, it is absolutely no joke. Um, you're insane. I think I'm in a pretty good place with it now, but there have absolutely been times you're when not. I have not been in a good place with it at all. And to be quite frank, seeing the support that these people get in bullying me has been one of the reasons i'm just like i want nothing to do with this fucking content creator space then get off the internet no one's making you do youtube channel like have a youtube channel and do streams you freak single day that i do this oh god and so there have been a few times when other content creators have spoken up about bullying and lauren southern was one of those people. Lauren Southern uh, was here we go. the first content creator that I remember. I mean, maybe there's another one and I just forgot. But Lauren Southern was the first one that really documented like some of the okay, not be sitting here just keep... about it. Um, and so I, oh, I truly God. have like no idea who she is other than I know she does like law tube stuff. BetterHelp is customized online therapy. So this fool doesn't strong. even know who she's talking about. Like. Oh, I don't even know who she is, but like, let's support her. I have no idea what she's her. about, um, but a that member of my community posted this video of in my course. community, um, I guess after she did it, um, call, it's called Dealing with Bullies, and they said, Carlin, someone else is experiencing bullying just like you have, and you may want to watch this. And I thought, well, I, I do want to watch it. Someone else is experiencing <laughs> bullying. You might want to watch this because you're but I wanna watch a it with psychopath friends. and you're mentally <laughs> ill. Holy cow, I can't even listen to this cow anymore. It's just absolutely insane, guys. I don't know what... what...
<laughs> what else to say. All I can say is that this has become 50 minutes long now. Mr. Ricada did address this stuff, honestly. He said, okay, let's talk about it. I've never demanded purity or allegiance from any of these people. I've done nothing but try to be supportive of everybody, you know, and I'm not responsible for everybody else. But let's just take a listen. About what do you want to do? What do we... What do you want to do? You want to talk about the law tube drama? I can, I can do that. I don't know if you want to do that a little bit, I guess. Um, I was just on Drex's stream. Drex is talking about it. So I guess I'm Drex has been a king. A little bit. I don't know. He's been uh, an absolute look, bro. I've been... Drex goes a little harder than I do. And, uh, and so does Legal Mind. Those are the people you want on your side. Set. Andrew, Drax, like when shit hits the fan and people are going after you and attacking you, those are the guys that you want there to have your back. And I have their back too. So I'm just saying like, I'm not down with any of this baby bullshit of, oh, I'm being bullied because people don't like the shit I say because it's insane and I'm a sociopath. Okay, come on. Let's just fast forward here, though. And look. Uh, and uh, Kurt came up in there, obviously, as a bro. And I've, I've tried to make this very clear. Like, Kurt has always been a friend to me. Um, from the get-go. Like, I th the first time Kurt and I act interacted, like, from that time on, Kurt and I have always been friends. Uh, look, I know Kurt has done stuff that... I don't agree with, um, and and that's fine. Like people aren't me. <laughs> like I'm I'm me. I'm a colossal asshole, and uh, that's that's where I stay, uh, and and that's kind of the basis of my decisions. And other people have different approaches to things. And if they ask me what to do, I would you know I will always tell them my opinion, but they don't have to take it because my way is a hard way sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes my way gets you kicked off of YouTube, right? Uh, and suspended on Twitch and kicked off of Twitter. Uh, that's banned from Streamlabs forever. Um, that's the way that I do things and not everybody does things that way. But I'm, I'm that way. So, uh, so for me, I have my sort of opinions on things and I, I kind of run with them. Um, but Kurt has always been a good friend uh, since I met him from, from day one, pretty much. And I've tried to make that clear. And through all of this stuff, he's, he's checking on me like daily. Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? I, in fact, he called me today because uh, he had texted me a couple times. He didn't want to bother me when I was, you know, during the ban, when I was getting a million messages, he didn't want to like intrude to the phone call. So today when he knew things had kind of calmed down, he gave me a call and I talked to him and, uh, and that's, you know, what what more could you uh, what more could you ask for? Um, so the but the main the main characters that I think Drex and, and Mindset were going after were uh, Legal Bites and Richard Hogue, as I said. So, you know, I Hogue said something in that clip that kind of bothered me. He said I had called him 30 or 50 names, which I don't ever recall saying anything negative about Richard Hogue ever. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I'm going to end the, this. It's, this went far longer than I wanted it to go, but um, it just really bothers me, you know, to see this kind of, like, nastiness, you know, the it, just arrogance, the sheer arrogance from people, the inability to self-reflect and say, yeah, like, I, I messed up, I done goofed, and I did something wrong, you know, and, uh, like, when people talk about this, it's not that we're trying to, like, cancel legal bites or anything like that. 
we are trying to hold her accountable to make her a better person like so she can learn from things again when you act like the way she does ultimately that behavior is self-destructive she admitted it herself when she said yeah i'm like hemorrhaging subscribers we are trying to save these judases from hanging themselves but at a certain point it's like she's not willing to listen to people so you just kind of have to wash your hands of people and let them learn on their own from their own mistakes and what i will say is again you know i think that doing the spite stream struggle session and demanding people show up to that was absurd you had the time to make this whole video and research all that but you didn't have the time to figure out what had happened to nick and that it wasn't deserved it's never deserved to be deplatformed, regardless of what people say, unless they're breaking the law. If their speech doesn't break the law, then it should not be censored, period. It's that simple. It is really that simple. And again, it's a reflection on her character, not Andrew's, not Nick's, not Drex's, not anyone else's. She should have had Nick's back, period. It is that simple at the end of the day. So anyways, that's my thoughts on this. I hope you guys enjoy the video um, and let me know what you all think.